Welcome. I've uh, been looking forward to doing this for everybody, and uh, I hope that you'll find it very interesting. Uh, with regard to, uh, oh, by the way, my name is Ed LeBeau, and I'm with Heartland Golf Schools, and I'll be doing this workshop for you. Uh, at the end, I'll do some Q&A. So uh, on Facebook, if you want to post a question or comment, we'll handle that at the end. I want to hold it till the end uh, so we can have continuity in this presentation. But I'm interested in your questions, and uh, I'll give you great answers. Uh, I want to give you a little background with regard to club-focused instruction. Uh, basically, the question is, why club-focused instruction? In golf, we use this thing here we call a golf club, but technically it's a tool. A tool is any device that allows you to do work you couldn't otherwise do. Uh, we can send a golf ball a lot further with this than without it. And what we found is that humans, you and I, use tools by what we see, not on how our body works. Uh, at its earliest, uh, when you and I were sitting in a high chair and mom was feeding us, we saw that spoon working. And before we had any language capability to communicate uh, or to understand our body parts, just by virtue of seeing how that spoon worked, pretty soon we were able to do it. Uh, the same is true with all the tools you've ever used, uh, a, a rake, a broom, a hammer, a screwdriver, a pair of scissors. We learn to use those not by understanding how our body worked, but by how the tool worked. Humans have a very unique ability in our brain. And that is, if we can see how a tool works, our brain will develop the muscular action to allow that to happen. So we don't need to understand the body. What we need to understand is what this is supposed to do. And by understanding what this should do, our subconscious will then direct the body to enable it to happen. With regard to CFI, uh, it was started by this fellow here, Ernest Jones. Um, back uh, in the World War I, Ernest was an English golf professional and uh, was called to service. And in France, he lost his right leg below the knee. Uh, of course, uh, as a golf professional, uh, he thought that was the end of his career. When he was released from the hospital, uh, he went out onto the golf course, asked a buddy of his to carry the clubs. And on a very difficult course, without having played for a long time, he shoots 87. The next day he goes out again and shoots 78. On one hand, Ernest is delighted. On the other hand, he's puzzled because he can't do the things with his body he always thought that he needed to do. What came to him is that it's not important what the body does as long as you do the right thing with this. He formalized that idea, uh, wrote a couple of books, which I highly recommend. Uh, and he met this fellow, Angel Delatore, uh, while playing European tour events. Angel was five-time national champion in Spain, uh, worked at a very prestigious club there. And the two of them began talking about golf instruction. And Angel soon became fascinated with it. And as he began to apply it, found out how much better it worked for his students. Angel had a son, this fellow here, Manuel Delatore, my teacher. Manuel brought club focus instruction into this century. Uh, and as a result, uh, he also wrote a, a book and has a DVD out. Um, I'd encourage you to, to read it. Uh, it's an excellent work with regard to club focus. This will give you some of the historical background. So club focus instruction is not something new. Uh, it's been around for a long time. It's tried, it's true, it's tested. Uh, I began my career in golf instruction doing body focus instruction. Yes, it's true. Uh, but soon I became introduced to manual and was puzzled at first with regard to this club focus thing. And then after attending one of the seminars, which he would conduct annually for golf instructors, I began to reflect on it. And several months after attending my first one, it dawned on me what he was really talking about. That was almost 20 years ago. And ever since then, uh, it's been club focused for me and for my players. And the remark that I get from them is that I didn't know golf could be this simple. And we see them improving, whether they're ranked beginners or experienced veterans, so much quicker through club focused instruction. Manuel would always say this golf is a game of sending a ball to a target. If we think about that, then it brings several principal ideas into mind. First, 
that the club, not the body, is exclusively responsible for the ball flight. So we need to understand what this should do to send the ball to a target. Second, it's the case that the actions of the club are objective. They're very defined. The club is going to move exactly one way. However, with the body, we can see from watching golf on TV that there are very many different body motions a player can make but still c deliver the club correctly. So the problem with body focus instruction is very subjective. It's very difficult to quantify. We talk about hip turn and shoulder and what plane should that be on and what sequence. It's very complicated. When we talk about the club, it's very simple as to what it should do. And finally, it's the case that the focus is on the club's relationship to the target. So once we set up what we're interested in is the club's relationship to the target. For most players, that's a big shift in their attention. Because most of us, when we're introduced to the game, we're told to keep our eye on the ball, which we quickly translated into concentrate on the ball. Get under the ball, get the ball up in the air, hit down on the ball, pinch the ball. For you and I, as golfers or as instructors, having our attention on the golf ball makes about as much sense as a marksman having his attention on the bullet. All of his attention is on the device that's going to propel that bullet, it's going to direct it. For us, it's this thing here. All of our attention wants to be on this. What is this doing relative to the target? When we set up, we're going to make contact with the ball. The question is, where are we going to send it? And this will determine that. What I want to share with you are the four essentials for propelling the ball to the target. These essentials apply to every club. So what we're going to learn with the driver works equally effective with the putter. What that does for us as players is to really simplify so that we know what I'm going to do on the next shot is exactly what I did on the last shot. My intention is going to be exactly the same. With regard to these four, they apply to every player. So whether you're man, woman, or child, whether you're young or old, these apply to every golfer. They're universal. With regard to the four, what they don't include is this. They don't include having a straight left arm. How do we know that? We know that because there are a lot of players who don't have a left arm, and yet they can play very nicely. What else don't they include? They don't include keeping your eye on the ball. What? Not keeping your eye on the ball. It's the case that there are 2,400 members of the Blind Golfers Association of America. How do they keep their eye on the ball? Golf is one of the few games that a blind person can play because the ball doesn't move. Once we set them up to the ball, now they're, all their ability is, all their intention is, is just to swing the club. The ball is in the path of their swing. With regard to these four, they don't include shifting your weight. One of the worst things we can do to shift our weight. You see, golf, the golf swing is a circle. And the bottom of that circle is where the ball should be. As we shift our weight, that circle moves. There is no advantage to shifting our weight. It's thought that we increase our power by doing that. But if you think about it, if you walk up to a wall, put your hand against it, and smack that wall as hard as you can, what you'll find is that your power is rotational, not lateral. So shifting the weight is something that we want to take out of our swing, and if we're teaching, it's something we don't want to teach another player. As a matter of fact, if you have a player, and I'm working with a new player right now, if you'll encourage them to learn how to keep their balance, you'll find that they progress so much faster. With regard to the four, they also don't include keeping your right elbow tucked in. How do we know that? Because there are a lot of players who don't have a right elbow, and yet they can play very nicely. It doesn't include keep making a full hip turn. There are players who play from wheelchairs. They can't make a full hip turn. And it doesn't include keeping a flat left wrist. So what are these four essentials? These are the four that really should be the focus of our game improvement as players and should really be the focus of every lesson that we give whether we're teaching a new player to play or whether we're trying to diagnose the ball flight that a player isn't satisfied with and that's why they come for a lesson. So here are the four essentials. Number one is this, and that is that the ball should be struck by the center of the club face. With regard to that center, it's the case that when the ball is struck by the center, the ball will travel forward. If it's struck by the toe, the club is going to twist and the ball will leave in this direction. By the heel, it's going to twist this way. The ball will leave in this direction. Center contact is absolutely important to get the ball to go down our target line. So it must have center contact. 
The second one is this, and that is that the club face should be perpendicular at impact. So as I'm making the swing, I want to make sure that my club face is perpendicular to my target line. Because once again, the club face will determine the starting point for the ball. If the club face is out of square, the ball cannot go down the target line. So the second thing that must happen is, and when we swing, is the club face must be perpendicular to the target line. The third one is this one, and this is the one that's probably the most elusive or the most difficult for a new player or even an experienced player to grasp, and that is that the club should be swung along the target line. And I want to take a minute to define what that is. You see, if I would stand like this and imagine a target line, and I had a ball in hand, and I wanted to throw it to you, my forearm would track the target line here, 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 here. It would track the target line all the way to you. The moment my forearm came off that target line, the ball cannot go to you. The club is just an extension of our arm. When we swing, we want the shaft of the club. We want the shaft of the club to go down the target line. So that my intention is, is I, when I'm at address, is I want to hold a picture of the target, and I want to get my shaft to go down the target line and eventually point at that target. Swinging the club to the target is an amazing thing that does amazing results on a golf swing. Once we get a player to begin swinging to the target, a whole host of problems go away. The fourth one is this, and that is the club is swung with enough speed to propel the ball the desired distance. So if the target is 150 yards away, you choose the club that sends the ball 150 yards. You choose the club that fits your swing speed. So with regard to the four essentials, they're these. Center contact, a square club face, swing to the target, and enough speed. Those are all that it takes to produce a golf shot that is straight, that is at the normal trajectory, and that optimizes whatever your speed is with regard to your swing speed. Now, what we want to do now is just take a little deeper dive into how do we achieve these. So how we accomplish them is this way. With regard to the ball being struck by the center of the club face, what we want to recognize is that at address, the club is in effect a radius of a circle, the radius of a circle. If the center of the circle moves, the radius is going to move. But if the center of the circle stays stationary, then the radius of the swing is going to come back we're going to get a lot of center contact. How do we do this? It's very simple. It's conceived as a concept, but also it's very easy for our players. All we want to do is to have them develop a sensitivity for their balance. So with regard to this, when we set up, we want to set the club down and then find our balance. Find our balance. It's very, very valuable. Once we find that balance, we then want to practice being able to make a full swing without losing the balance. We want to be able to make the back swing and the forward swing without losing that balance. When we don't lose the balance, now it's the case that the center stays stationary and the club comes back and finds the golf ball right in the middle of the club face. When you watch golf on TV, notice how much shifting of the weight there is for those players. What you'll find is zero. And whatever is less than zero occurs when they're, in a, when they're in a fairway bunker and they need to get the ball cleanly out of the fairway bunker. Balance is so critical. When, <laughs> when people ask me for a golf tip, the one I give them is that balance is the unsung hero of a great golf swing. So with regard to the ball being struck by the center of the club face, what we want to understand is to maintain our balance through impact. Now once the club passes impact, the momentum of the club is going to pull us to a front foot. The club will shift our weight not us. So here's number two. Number two is this one, and that is the club face should be perpendicular to the target line at impact. How do we do that? What we want to do is to study our anatomy, yours and mine, very similar. When we have our arm and we extend our arm like this, what we're going to find is that the joint in your shoulder, in your elbow, and in your wrist is going to produce your, deliver your hand thumbs up when you just swing like this. If you were hanging from a rope, you would find that you'd be hanging this way. So the joints in our arm, when they are subjected to a pulling action, are going to turn thumbs up. So that when I swing, the centrifugal pull of the club is going to turn my hand thumbs up. With that being the case, what I want to do then is to remember that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position my hands on the club so that my thumb is up 
like so. I'll curl the fingers, set the thumb. Thumb is up, curl the fingers, set the thumb. This is what would be called a neutral grip. The hands are in a praying configuration. So that now both hands are going to be delivered to this position. So now it's the case that by getting the club set correctly in my hands, when I swing, the joints in my arm are going to square the club face for me at impact. The club's doing 60, 70, 80, however fast you swing, miles per hour, it doesn't matter. The club is going to be squared by the joints in your arm. Now, there are other factors that affect that, but principally, that's the big one. That's the big one. So we want to have a neutral grip, and that's how we ach achieve this, to hold the club with a neutral grip and align the club face. So the second phase of that is this, and that is that once I get my hands in a neutral position, I want to check the grooves on the club face. I want to check the grooves. What you'll find, perhaps, for your own swing, and certainly 8 out of 10 players that you teach, is in fact that the club's going to look this way when they raise it up waist high the grooves are going to be leaning left. What that does is it sets the club up on the leading edge and it de-lofts the club. Once they turn the grooves vertical like this, the club is now going to sit on the bounce and the, and the loft of the club is going to be fully displayed. So it's a tremendous advantage and I've seen many, many lessons given where the instructor never observes that with the player. So for your own game, or if you're teaching, it's something we want to be careful of, and that is to make sure that the player has the grooves vertical. It will help your lesson progress much more nicely, and this will help them as players produce shots with a normal trajectory. They're going to have a lot more trajectory with their lofted clubs, and when the ball reaches the green, it's going to sit down. It's going to sit down. So with regard to the number two is to us to hold the club with a neutral grip and align the, or align the grooves of the club face. Number three is the club is swung along the target line. Well, there is no physical target line. There is only a mental target line. There is a relationship between me and the target. I could, with my fingers, point a line to the camera. I can imagine that target line. I can imagine where the camera is. What we want to do is to help our players, to coach our players, if we're teaching, or to develop for ourselves as a player, we want to develop the ability to remember the location of the target. It's a whole skill in itself. If you want to do this, here's a fun little exercise. Just take the club upside down like this and pick out an object across the room, close your eyes, and attempt to walk over and touch it with the end of the club. It's good practice for what it's like to remember the target's location. If we lose it for just a second, the club has already been moving and it can move out of it, can move offline. So we want to be able to set up, look at the target, and not that it's there, but remember its location so that I can make a swing delivering the club to that target. That's true for putter through driver. Remember the target's location, get the club to go to the target. And so the way we do it is to remember the target's location and swing the club to the target. What you'll find for many players as they're working on this is they will look at the target, remember its location, and as the club comes forward and gets near the ball, they'll get interested in the golf ball. So one thing you could do for yourself as a player or for your uh, students is to have them practice making swings of the target without the ball, getting used to remembering where the target is and getting the club to point there. Now, one, f one fine point about this, and that is all of our targets in golf are on the ground, a landing area in the fairway, the hole up on the green. They're all on the ground. So when I imagine my club swinging to the target, I'm going to see the club pointing downward, whether it's 10 feet away or whether it's 150 yards away. The club should be seen. So what I want to do is I want to get the club pointing at the target. So as I make my swing, the club will momentarily point at the target as it proceeds over my shoulder. That's number three. Number four is this one, that the club is swung with enough speed to propel the ball the needed distance. And here, the key is, is to choose the right club for your swing speed. Now, just a, a, a small digression. With regard to making partial shots, like putts and chips, what we want to do is we want to control the distance by the size of the arc we make. Now, there is no magic size for the backswing. There are many players who say, well, I want for 80 yards, it's, it's here, and for 90 yards, it's here. Is that uphill or downhill? 
Is that into the wind or with the wind? Is that when it's cold out or not? What we want to do is to recognize that that's not how we regulate distance. If you and I were playing catch and we're tossing the ball back and forth and we're moving around backing backward and forward, etc., what you'll find is that there is no intention, there is no awareness of the size of my arc. What there is is a recognition as to where the target is. We want to control the distance by visualizing the ball going to my target and stopping there. This takes some practice for ourselves as players and certainly for our students. But what you'll find is that they have done this their whole life. You have done this your whole life. And so the ability to adapt it to your golf game happens quite readily. So at address, what we want to do is to be able to, again, look at the target, remember its location. And as I make a swing, I want to see the ball rolling over and stopping at the target. Rolling and stopping. Even if it's a lofted club, I want to see it rolling and stopping. So with regard to number four, it's choose the club that fits your swing speed. So we have center contact, square club face, swing to the target, and enough speed. Those are the four things that we want to build a baseline golf swing. Now there are other modifications we can make to a swing to produce different trajectories or to curve the ball, but for a baseline straight shot at normal trajectory, these are exactly the things that we want to achieve. It's called club-focused instruction. Again, if you have questions, please post them, uh, and I'll address them uh, at when we conclude this. So with regard to these four essentials, center contact is balanced, square club face is the neutral grip and align the club face. Swing to the target is remembering the location, enough speed is club choice, choose the right club. I'm going to take a minute and just let you gander that and process it. And we're kind of rolling through this. By the way, uh, this recording will be saved and stored, and you can uh, watch it again uh, if you think it was really great. And I hope you do. <coughs> so this is what to do, and here is how to do it. Now what I want to do is I want to take these concepts, these principles, these central ideas, these swing essentials, and now build, put them into the context of the setup and the swing. So what we want to do is we want to talk about these two things now, the setup and the swing. With regard to the setup, we're going to address the three things. One is the grip, second is the club position, and third is the body position. So first with regard to the grip. We alluded to it before. I'm going to do it again very slowly. With regard to establishing a grip for yourself or if you're teaching, a very nice way to do it is just to take this hand and have it exactly vertical. Many players right away will want to do this. Have it exactly vertical, curl the fingers, and set the thumb. For the right hand, the little finger rests against the index, but what we want to do is to curl the fingers and set the thumb. And what we'll find is that the thumb fits the left thumb fits right in the pocket of the right hand. By the way, what you'll see is that I have a 10-finger grip. With regard to the grip, I advocate this 10-finger grip, and I want to digress for just a moment and tell you about it. With regard to this grip, I want to ask you, here's an overlapping grip. Could I hit the ball left? Could I hit it right? Could I top it? Could I chunk it? Could I shank it? All of those. Here's the interlocking grip. Could I top it? Could I shank it? Could I hit it fat? Could I hit it left? Could I hit it right? Certainly all of those. What does this grip fix? What does this uh, finger arrangement fix? Absolutely nothing. What it does do is it takes some of the fingers off the golf club. What you're going to find is that in an interlocking grip, we only have eight fingers on the golf club, overlapping nine. But with a ten finger grip, all ten fingers are on the club. What does that mean? It means the grip pressure for each finger needs to be slightly less, which means your sensitivity and feel could be slightly better which means the tension in your arms could be slightly less and the swing speed slightly faster. For a new student, it's going to be much easier for them to get acclimated to do this than to do any of these other things that feel so funky. So with a 10-finger grip, I just encourage you, give it a try. If you have a different grip, try 10 fingers. Go out and make some putts, make some chips. Don't do anything too dramatic. Don't try to drive the ball through two trees. Uh, but take some simple shots and go to the 10-finger grip. I think you'll find it's very easy to adapt to and it works great. It works just great. So with regard to the grip, 
we want to get the hands on the club correct. Then what we want to do is we want to get the club oriented. Remember, when most players raise that club up, it's going to be this way. What we want to do is to have them not turn the hands, but turn the club in the hands until the grooves are vertical. Until these grooves are vertical. <laughs> so that's how we want to grip the club. With regard to the club position, what we want to do is to solve a club so that it's favoring the heel. So I've got a little piece of yellow tape on this golf club right here. So if I take this club and divide it in half, divide the grooves in half, I want the club to rest favoring the heel. Because when I swing this club, what's going to happen is we're going to get droop. The shaft is going to bend. And as it does, the club is going to do this. If I start out level, the club will now be toe down. But if I start out favoring the heel, now the club will come in flush. So as I set up, I want to be able to set the club down so that if I just set, these clubs are fit to me. So if I just take this club and just bend over, the club rests right there. Once the club is sitting there on the bounce, now what I want to do is to center myself on the club. I want to center myself on the club. Why center? Because if I take my hands and start making an action like this, what I'll find is that there's one point where my hands are square to the target line. And that's as they cross my center line. If I put the ball back in my stance, you can see the club is facing to the right. If I put the ball forward in my stance, you can see the club is facing left. There are a lot of players who are told to vary the position of the, of the ball by virtue of the club. So you play your lofted clubs toward your right side, you play your other clubs toward your left, you play the left one, you play the driver off the front foot. All that variability takes the club out of its normal position as to where your body is going to square it. And it's the case it produces inconsistency because when we play the ball a little back for our seven iron, do we play it back the exact number of inches all the time? No. So we're going to have a lot more consistency if we will center ourselves on the club. A lot more consistency and it's where the club is going to be square. So with regard to the club, we want to set the club, get the club, get the hands on the club neutral, grooves vertical, set the club down, soling, favoring the heel, and then center yourself on the golf club. When you center yourself, what we want to do is to find our balance. And what we want is we want the weight to be right behind the balls of the feet. That's where it is when we have an action, like throwing the ball, etc. You find your weight right behind the balls of your feet. That's where it will tend to stay. If a player sets up on their toes or their heels, they'll tend to shift their weight as they make the swing. If I'm on my toes, what I'm going to tend to do is to want to get balanced. It's where I feel secure safe and athletic, but now the swing has moved away from the ball, I'm going to catch it off the toe. If I set up on my heels, I'm going to tend to rock forward, and now I'm going to catch the ball off the heel because I've just come forward. So I want to find that balance. So with regard to the grip, the club position, and the body position is centered and balanced. Centered and balanced. And again, you got questions or comments, post them and we'll address them after this is done. With regard to the swing, number one, balance. Like I mentioned, I have a new player I'm working with. Uh, she's brand new to the game, uh, never held a golf club. What we have worked on for the first three lessons is just to be able to be balanced, and she's really getting it. And so now we're able to produce some really nice ball flight. Uh, but it's very common as the swing goes around for a player to go with it, for the swing to go over their shoulder, for them to come up with it, and for them to think they need to go down to get the ball. And so we get this up and down, up and down very valuable thing is just have them brush the grass. Just have them brush the grass. Or if they're on a mat, have them brush the carpet. Uh, it's the case that when they do that, when they do that, now we begin getting our balance. And when we begin brushing the carpet, now we've been catching the ball in the club face. We get a nice trajectory and they're real happy. So with regard to the swing, we want to get balanced. With regard to the swinging motion, there are many players who don't understand this swinging motion. They think any time the club goes from here to here, it's a golf swing. It's not. A swing is a very specific motion. When this club swings, the whole club swings. Here, the club head is swinging, but you'll notice the butt of the club is going in the opposite direction. So this kind of action here, this hand action, actually produces leverage. Leverage, you might remember, is like a crowbar where one end goes one direction, the other goes opposite. That's not swinging. That's leverage. Swinging is when the butt of the club and the head of the club are both moving in the same direction at the same time. It's like the hands on a clock, if you imagine them in reverse, going this way. Going this way, that's swinging. 
Swinging has a couple of very interesting characteristics which you'll want in your game as a player, but what you'll want in, your, in the game as your students. And that is, with regard to swinging, however fast I move the butt of the club, the head of the club has to travel a greater distance. It magnifies my speed. So if I take this club and swing it, the butt of the club is going to travel oh, eight inches to get to my center. The head of the club is going to travel two feet. So what this does in eight inches, that's got to do in two feet, it's going to go much faster. And it's why your eight iron goes further than your nine iron. It's a little bit longer. It has to travel further. That's one reason. So with regard to swinging, we want to get used to swinging, as Manuel would call it, swinging the whole club. Not the handle, not the head, but the whole club. And when you do that, you're going to find, number one, is that you produce your optimum speed. But second, what you're going to find is that when you swing the whole club, the whole club gets delivered here. And when it does, now the club is, has its right trajectory. It's facing forward. We produce a very nice golf shot. Swinging the club, learning to swing it. And here again, uh, I encourage you uh, as a player, but also as an instructor, to teach in slow motion. It's a terrific way to learn. We learn to use tools best when someone shows us how they work slowly. So show your player how this club swings and have them at that speed do that. They'll do it right away. And they'll say, gee, this is simple. Give them some time to practice it and then allow them to do it a little bit faster, a little bit faster, a little bit faster. And then have them do it while they're brushing the grass. Have them learn to swing the club. It pays terrific dividends to accelerate your game, mine, and them as players. So many players are taught to set up with that club leaning forward and to pull that club forward. Anytime the butt of the club arrives first, the head of the club is out of square. Right now the club is facing forward. The head is now facing off to the right. Or it's de-lofted. We want to learn to swing the club, to deliver the whole club, to have the whole club swinging. There are a number of players on tour that do this very, very well. The idea of lag is just a, an invitation for timing, and timing is an invitation for inconsistency. We want to be able to swing the whole club from here all the way to there. And finally, we want the swing to be target-oriented. This is so important. When I make the swing, I want the swinging motion to deliver the club to the target. If we take a look at my hand, what we'll see is that you say, well, gee, the swing comes inside. Inside to here to inside, inside to inside. It depends what part of the club we're looking at. If I look at my hand, yes, the club is coming inside. But if I look at my forearm, oh, my arm is coming right down the target line. If I look at my form, it's going right down the target line. So it depends what part of the club we look at. So when people say, uh, is the club go straight back, straight through, the answer is yes and no at the same time. The shaft goes straight back and straight through. The club head does not. The club head has a relationship to you. As you turn, it's going to turn. As you turn, it's going to turn. But the shaft of the club is going right along the target line. It's going to go right along the target line. So learning to make that swing, so we swing the club at the target. What you could imagine is that as the club goes from 6 o'clock to 5 o'clock to 4 o'clock, that you and the club are going to both be pointing at the target. Take this out and make some little chip shots. Pick a target out and make some little chip shots where you and the club point at the base of that tree or the base of that whatever, and you're going to see that ball go exactly there. And for our players, it's so important for them to have a clearly defined formula for controlling the ball. Oh, it's a simple game now. I understand that. I can control the ball. A lot of players, it's hit and hope. But once you learn to control the club relative to the target, it's hit and be happy because the ball is going to go right there. And as, that, as we begin to build that relationship between club and target, it becomes really important and it's a priority. It becomes my number one priority is I'm swinging the club to get it to go there. Now what can happen is there's a lake, there's wind, there's trees, there's elevation, all these things to distract me from that. But if I'm at the range and I'm practicing staying on that target, staying on the target, there's a very good chance on the golf course those other distractions will bother me less. They'll still bother me once in a while. So with regard to the swing, these are the three elements for the swing. So uh, that concludes the session. We're going to store it. You can take a look at it again. Uh, uh, feel free to uh, pass a link to, uh, to friends or anybody that think it would be helpful. And uh, great being with you.
I'm Ed LeBeau. Stay safe. Play well.